Welcome to the introduction to Adobe Photoshop. In this session, we're going to talk about your workspace, otherwise known as an interface for Adobe Photoshop. We'll talk about your toolbar, the tool options panel, floating panels, customizing your workspace, and the image window. We'll select tools. We'll find hidden tools. We're going to talk about adjusting tools using your tool options bar opening and closing floating panels, moving them around, customizing a workspace, and opening a file. If all of these elements are familiar to you, and if you have experience working with Adobe Photoshop, you may want to go ahead and skip this introduction. Otherwise, it's pretty exciting, and I know some of you have been waiting a long time to learn Photoshop. It may have been on your to-do list for quite some time. So, let's get started. As we look at this entire area, it's known as the Adobe Photoshop Workspace. We have our main menu across the top, a Workspace menu here, a Tools Options panel going along here, which is related to your toolbar located on the left side. Your Image window is located here in the center and your floating panels are located typically on the right side. Now many of you ha are going to have a different look and feel to your workspace than I do. I'm working in a Macintosh environment um, and my panels, because they are customizable, can expand and contract, my panels are going to look different from your panels. Um, a good place to start, though, is using the Essentials workspace. That's the default workspace. And that's where we'll begin. Um, but just knowing that some of your panels will look different from mine is okay. It's not a problem. We're going to learn how to adjust the panels and make it a more comfortable working environment for you. Let's start off by talking about your Tools panel located on the left side of the Image window. I can select tools by simply clicking on them. I can expand and contract the Tools panel by clicking on the little arrows on the top left. And also I can find hidden tools. Little hidden treasures are located under each tool where there's an indicator, which is an arrow on the bottom right that indicates there's more tools related to the default tool. In this case we've got the rectangular marquee tool selected but I can choose different types of selection tools. Notice how as I change those selection tools the tool options bar comes up with different options for me and I can adjust and make this tool work more precisely with the task that I want to accomplish in the image window. As you work with the tools, you'll start to understand what options work best for you in the Tools Options panel. And so I can find more hidden gems by selecting and holding, or click and hold, and it brings up the hidden tools or the different types of tools that are available to you. So at this point, I encourage you to press pause on the video and just click and hold and look at the various tools that you can find that are available to you. We will go over each of these tools in more detail um, in a later module. But for now, just kind of familiarize yourself with the Tools panel while looking at the Tools option bar above. Another thing to notice about the Image window, which is in the center section, is that if I click and hold the bottom right of the image window, and this is primarily in a Macintosh where I've got this setting selected to arranging the documents. Um, I'm in screen mode and I can, because of this, I can actually move this image window around. And I like having that ability um, because it gives me more flexibility as far as viewing what's going on in this image window. I can keep it more centered within my workspace, whereas here part of the image could be obscured. So I like having that ability to move that image window around. And then the floating panels that are located on the right side, notice how they can expand and contract. I can pull panels off. I can bring them back in, typically. 
I can expand and contract these panels. I can close a panel. I can bring it back up under Window drop-down menu is where all of these panels can be found. So why don't you try click and hold on the Window drop-down menu and just look at some of the different panels that are available to you. Practice expanding and contracting. Maybe try moving them around. The history panel is one of my favorite panels that I like to have up and available at all times, as is the layers panel. Now at this point you're not going to know which panels you prefer to have up. I can only tell you what my favorite panels are. Um, I don't typically use channels and paths unless I'm doing a very specific task but I do like to have the layers panel up and available at all times. I also like to have, as I mentioned before, the history panel. The history panel gives us a working history of everything that has occurred in this document that's up. So in this particular image that I'm working on, I was just working with the text tool located here. And as I was working and typing the type tool, you can see that Various changes took place as I was preparing this document for you. And I can use the history panel to go back in history. If I make a big mistake, I can back up a bit and start over again. So that's a very important thing, especially when you get into editing images you might need to back up a few steps. So that's why I like to have the history panel up. I also like, I enjoy mixing colors and um, the mix, color mixer is located here. And notice how in the floating panels there's a very small and obscure drop down menu that's located in the top right of the panel. Now I'm not really sure whose grand idea it was to hide this little drop down menu here. It's sort of hard to see and that's been in later versions since CS3. But if I use this drop-down menu, you can see that I can select from a number of color sliders that allow me to change hue, saturation, and, and brightness, um, the amount of red, green, and blue light that is reflected, and I can mix colors here. And notice how the colors that are mixed here, this is the foreground, this is called the background color, are also related to the tools panel, foreground and background. And I can toggle between foreground and background. So I also like to have the color panel and the swatches panel available as I work. Now, once you get a few panels up that you like, maybe you decide that you're interested in text editing, you can go under Window and you can bring up some of the text panels, including Character. Notice when I opened up the Character text panel, it brings up also Paragraph. And that's because Photoshop groups panels by um, similar types of panels. Things that are related to text editing are automatically grouped together by default. I like to have um, I like to have these panels up and available too in some cases when I'm creating for example a web page um, and I like to have like sample text, um, button text, things of that nature. I like to have these text panels available. So if I've got a workspace that I'm pretty happy with and I've arranged my panels in such a way so that I can still see my little image window and I can still expand and, and contract my panels. Once I get fairly comfortable with this workspace that I like, I can actually save a workspace so that I can come back to it again at a later date. And that's under Window, Workspace, New Workspace. And here's where I can save my workspace. I'm just going to call it My Workspace for this example. You can call it whatever you'd like and I'm going to hit save. Now I have saved my workspace and it's going to remember the floating panels preferences that I have here. Now if I were to return to let's say the default workspace 
after I've made a few changes and I click on Essentials, it'll return me to that Essentials the last time I used the Essentials workspace. And that's the default workspace. So I can always get back to default. I can also get to different types of workspaces like the design workspace, which is more concerned with type editing and uh, different types of brushes. The photography typical workspace is interested in the histogram of the photograph, making basic photographic adjustments here. You can obviously go into a lot of detail for photo, photo manipulation in Photoshop, and the layers panel is de by default up. But if I return to my workspace, then it's something that I'm more comfortable with and the, the tools that I use more often. So we've saved my workspace. The next thing I want to show you is how to simply open a file. And if you look at the Photoshop main menu, I'm going to go under File, Open, and it'll go, it defaults now to the pictures folder that I have. You will be able to navigate through your various folders and you can see that I'll just choose something here at random. Let's look at the lunar eclipse that just recently occurred in 2011 and notice how I can expand and contract my image window. If I bring up uh, the Navigator panel, which is kind of a fun one to play with at first, so under Window Navigator, I can zoom in on the image, zoom out. I can move around the image by using when my cursor turns to the grabber hand as it moves over the Navigator panel, you can see how I can move through the image. As we zoom in, it gets more and more pixelated as we see the t detail of all the little tiny squares that actually are used or involved in making up this image. So the Navigator panel is one way to move about the image. Another way is, I'm going to close Navigator, another way is to use your magnifying tool. If I use the zoom tool, I click on it in my tools panel. Notice how I have it's right now set to the minus. You see how the little minus sign is in the middle of the zoom tool. I can switch in my options panel for that tool back and forth to the plus so I can zoom in or minus so I can zoom back out. I can also use a quick key on my keyboard, which is the alt key. When I press the Alt key on the keyboard, it also changes that zoom tool from plus to minus. And so that's a time saver because I like to zoom in and out quickly and easily and look at sections of the image. And so using that Alt key on my keyboard saves me time from having to actually go up to the panel, click, and then it just saves me a step. So those are just a few things I'd like you to play with and get to know the Adobe Photoshop interface. Please let me know if you have any questions and enjoy. Have fun.